Hey everyone, it's me again. Welcome to my next video, which you've guessed it is a makeup tutorial. Today I have a super special tutorial for you guys. Uh, if you'll recall, last week I posted a tutorial for the Melt Cosmetics Dark Matter eyeshadow stack. This week I am making this tutorial for the Melt Cosmetics Lovesick eyeshadow stack. My original goal was to use as much of this quad as I could, if not the whole thing. Um, I ended up using three out of the four shadows in the look today, um, and I decided to do a halo eye, which is something that I don't normally do a whole lot, um, because halo eyes don't really go very well with my eye shape. I have very small eyes to begin with, and they're already pretty deep set, so the last thing I need is a halo eye to deep set them even more. But you know, I was feeling adventurous, I feel like I've been playing it safe uh, a lot in the past videos and I really wanted to go out of my comfort zone and do something interesting and this style of eye look has been trending a little bit lately so I figured I'd make a tutorial for you guys to teach you how to do it. Uh, it's not my favorite look on myself but it can work very very well on all kinds of different eye shapes and skin tones. Um, so this is what we're going for. At first I was a little bit scared but I ended up really liking how it turned out out. Um, this is a great like night out look. It's a very good party look. Um, and it's just something, you know, to really change up and dress up your typical evening look. So if you guys want to learn how to get this purple and peachy halo eye, then please keep on watching. Hey you guys. All right, let's go ahead and get started because this is going to be a pretty long tutorial I think like when I was doing this eye it took me legitimately an hour to try and get it to look right so first I'm gonna take NYX jumbo eye pencil in black bean and I'm gonna rub a little bit of this on the back of my hand this just makes life a lot easier when it comes to applying black bean it makes sure that you don't get too much of the black base all over your neighborhood here and we're going to take a little shadow C brush, dip it in that, and we're going to put this on the outside and inside of our upper lid. Starting out here where you want most of the pigment to live, and we're just going to kind of stamp this all on the outer third pretty much. So you're kind of making a triangle shape. Now my eyes are a little bit hooded, so I'm going to have to go higher than most people probably do. But again, we're still focusing toward the back end, and we're kind of winging it out, kind of not. I don't know. Don't worry too much about this, because it's literally just an eyeshadow base. Now for the inner corner. The inner part is the toughie, because you do not want to look like you got punched in the face. All right, so now that the base is down, I'm going to go ahead and take this domed, um, small, tiny brush that I got from BH Cosmetics, and I'm just going to, you know, blend the base out. This is something that I didn't do on my other eye that I really wish I had because it just makes life a little bit easier when it comes to blending later on because black bases can be a little bit tough when it comes to blending out eyeshadow. So we're just taking the edges and kind of blending the harsh lines away. Excellent. So now we're going to take Promiscuous from the Love Six Stack, and we're gonna pat our eyeshadow C brush in that, same one we used for the black base, and we're just gonna pat promiscuous wherever we put the black. All 
You don't have to worry too much about making a mess on the outside of your eye because you can clean that up with a makeup wipe later, but just focus on keeping the center of your lid bare. Don't put any dark stuff there because it's going to be really hard to take away. And I'm going to take this pretty far up on the outside. Just making sure all that black gets some purple on it. Now we're going to do the inside, and here I like to just make padding motions rather than sweeping it around too much. Because especially with the inner corner, you want to make sure your placement of color, um, that you have a lot of control with where that color is going. Otherwise, you can over purple very, very easily. There we go. All right, now that our purple is down, we're gonna start to blend it out. I'm gonna take my little Pro Blending Fluff from Crown Brush, and we're just gonna start going nuts over here. We're gonna really attack it and get those harsh edges blended out in circular motions on the outer corner. And we're gonna kinda start to pull the color over into the crease, but we're still keeping the center lid bare. So these two edges are almost meeting in the middle, but not quite. See, there's a little bit of blank space there. It's just barely fading in. And then we're gonna fade up into nothing, ideally. Don't worry about the inner corner too, too much. We're just gonna make sure that there's no harsh lines in there. And again, all this, once the center color is on the lid, we can touch up all this again later. All right, good enough for now. So we're gonna take our center lid shade, which is Amelie, and we're gonna take a little flat shader brush from Sonia Kashuk, this is the 106, and I'm gonna pat this in the center of my lid. Kind of load up your brush, don't be shy with this color, because this is your pop. And we're going to put quite a bit of this on the center of the lid. This is like our main interest point. It's the whole point of a halo eye, is the glowing center. And you're also going to put it along the edges of the purple-black mixture that you placed there earlier, just to start to, you know, blend that together. I have found that these two colors can blend together really well because they're both shimmery shades. So the shimmer just kind of meshes. And we're not looking for a total gradient. Like obviously these two things, these two colors are going to stand out from one another. We're just trying to smush them together a little bit. And you're going to take this up into almost kind of the crease area of the eye because that ends up giving your eye kind of a wet look, which is kind of cool. And we're just loading up on this mother. Just patting it all over the place in the center of that lid. All right. I'm going to start kind of using my finger to get a little more pigmentation and patting this on and blending back and forth. You don't want to take all the purple away, but you do want this to be the focal point of your look, so don't be scared to get this all up in the in the purple's business. All right, because we can go ahead and take our pro blending fluff and start to fluff Someone's calling me, hold on. Okay guys, sorry about that, Hubs was on the phone. Uh, anyway, so where was I? Good, we have established our center lid um, while I, kind of half while I wasn't recording, I was just adjusting the blend a little bit, but I didn't do too much off camera, I promise. But we're gonna keep adding the center lid space, and because I mean, with halo eyes, it's a little bit tricky because some eye shapes work better for halo eyes than others, 
my eye shape is not one of those shapes. All right, so now that we've got that pretty much established and where we're comfortable with it, we're gonna take our blending fluff again. And again, we're just going to town, small circular motions, and we're kind of pulling this purple color up to meet in the center. You don't have to connect it in the center at the top, that's just what I like to do. Um, but yeah, it's entirely up to the individual what you want to do with that. So we're just going to connect that at the top and work this color, work the sides of the halo to kind of blend those two shades together. Work the top, work the sides, work the back, and just get it from a blending perspective where we want it. This is an avant-garde look anyway, so the phrase of the day is, I meant to do that. So now we're going to do the lower lash line. Um, so black bean as a base isn't really going to be practical here because the lower lash line is such a small, tight area. First, I'm going to take a little makeup wipe and I'm going to wrap it around my finger and I'm just going to clean the inside part of my eye because I did get a little bit of purple there and we only want purple where we want there to be purple so I just clean that up a little bit just to get rid of any excess color. My ferrets are out. All right, got all kinds of distractions happening today. Instead of for black bean because black bean tends to kind of like to move around uh, I'm going to use the Urban Decay Glide On Eye Pencil in Perversion and I'm just going to put it on the outside uh, lower lash line here, like in the waterline and on the lashes, um, but just on the outside and a little on the inside, not in the center. You're going to start noticing that pattern here. And I tend to drag it right until just before my iris, like just before where the color is on my eye when I'm looking dead on in a mirror. And I'm going to take that down lower than I normally would and sort of connect it up at the top for when we do the upper liner. And again, we're just stopping right as we're hitting color when I'm looking dead on in the mirror. And I'm not gonna take the inner part as low. I'm just gonna kinda keep that inner part in the waterline so my eye doesn't look too closed. It's already pretty, pretty well drooped. We don't need any more droop than we already have. It's promiscuous, and I'm just gonna start to Smoke this liner. And we're making sure that the upper and lower lash lines are kind of connected in that way. I'm gonna go back in with this. And now we're gonna do the highlight in the middle. Y'all see in a pattern here? So I'm gonna take Amelie again. Get a little on there. And we're just gonna pop this right in the center of our lower lash line. There. See that? That's simple. So that's the basics. You could stop here realistically and have it be perfectly fine, but I noticed that I needed a little bit more depth in the outer corner, so I'm going to go ahead and take Fixated, which is one of my, becoming quickly one of my favorite shades in this little quad, and I'm going to take my blending fluff and just get that on the very, very tips, tap it off little tiny bit, and put that in the outer corner. So my original goal was to use all of the eyeshadows in this quad, but Lovesick just didn't seem to really fit anywhere um, in the context of this halo eye. So I'm probably going to skip using it. I tried to use it a little on this eye, but it just kind of ends up disappearing. So I'm not going to really bother too much with that. I am, however, going to clean up my edges again. Next step is eyeliner uh, for the upper lash line. For that, I decided to use my NYC liquid liner, haven't used this in a while, in black, of course, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a thin line across the upper lash line. We don't want to take too much attention away from the eyeshadow because that's the main focus today, um, but we do want to ground the eyeshadow. We want to give it somewhere to land, and that's going to be the eyeshadow's landing pad is this little, this little bugger. So I'm gonna get it open. There we go. I've got my mirror on my lap here, and I'm just gonna run a very, very thin line 
across the upper lash line and kind of adjust as I need to. I'm going to go ahead and take my perversion pencil again and I'm just going to look like a crazy person for a minute and try to line. But now we're going to go ahead and take, this is new, I just got this not too long ago. It's the Clinique High Impact Curling Mascara. I've heard a lot of good things about this, um, but I've never tried it and I needed a new mascara, so I went ahead and tried this. I'm going to use this on my upper and lower lashes. I know, I normally don't use mascara on my lower lashes, but this time I'm going to, just because of that highlight in the center that can bring your eyes forward so much, I want something to be showing on that lower eyelid, so I feel like the black lashes against the highlight will... Help me out with that a little bit. Okay, so mascara is on. Now I'm, now that I'm kind of seeing the way things look, I'm gonna touch up the eyeliner on my other eye a little bit and decide if I wanna do lashes or not and just kind of adjust things on my other eye, which you guys don't really need to see, but I will do that and I will be right back. That's pretty much it for the whole finished look. Let's go ahead and do some awkward posing. Awkward posing. Awkward posing. Looking down. Looking forward. Looking good. All right, guys. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and learned something cool today. I love how this turned out. I think it looks great. And now I'm going to go run my errands with a full face of clubbing makeup on. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!